go first. My first thought was that all of us are probably never impacted by this internet shutdown because I think it has never happened in Delhi. And most of us are from Delhi. It has never happened in Bombay. It has never happened elsewhere. So none of us are directly involved. My own personal experience is that in 1993, on the day of the Bombay blast, that was my first visit to Bombay. And uh, I was just about to get married next month. And my two young brothers-in-law, who were about 13 years younger than I, they were in school. So uh, soon after landing, I had to go home and then pick them up from their schools in Don Bosco. And uh, we're on the road, and from the Sifshena Bhavan, we're turned back. And the school happens to be just near that in Matunga. We came back home after getting the kids, after a lot of struggle. The first thing I noticed was that the phones were off. You could not call anybody, you could not receive any calls. And that was the time, as a young 26-year-old guy, I wondered that, is it not counterproductive to shut the lawn when a disaster has struck? And since then, I have wondered, is there a policy or is there a... Is there a principle why the government does it? And I think now with phone calls, SMSs, now with data, we have come to an age where data is more important than voice calls, perhaps at least to people like us. The problem has not been solved, and we have not got the answer. Why is it done? Is it part of a calculated policy? Does it have an impact? So I think if we start discussing, I mean, there are a lot of, quite a few people I see who are from the government. If they can tell us, what is the rationale behind this? Pan, I actually wanted to ask you this about the impact it has on business because that's one perspective we haven't gotten. So how did it impact uh, Ola, for example, when uh, the internet was shut down in Gujarat uh, or in any other city? How is it impacted? So we have faced this in Gujarat and uh, uh, for, for the longest time. Otherwise, you have like intermittent uh, issues on the internet. Uh, uh, the way we have dealt with it is, is to create solutions around it uh, rather than, you know, uh, asking ourselves as to why this happens and how can we stop this. Uh, so more often than not, if, if there's poor data connectivity, then the app optimizes on 2G and if even that's not working, then it works on SMS and so does the driver app. So SMS is the fallback and uh, we've still not figured out what happens if the SMS is also not working for, for let's say, a region. But for an individual, there's an offline channel in which he can, uh, he, uh, uh, the consumer can book a ride. But uh, it will not run through unless, you know, the driver's data or, or the driver's phone has at least an SMS. It needs to have an SMS to for the business to run. So it, it can practically run on SMSs, but uh, that that's the basic minimum which is required. But, but also uh, getting to a location, the direction services, none of that works without data. So are we reaching a situation where businesses whose entire existence depends on the internet so we have a strong dependency on internet, no two things about it, uh, uh, but uh, more so from a GPS perspective, which still works even if there's no data. So with the SMS, location is not a challenge, but navigation is a challenge. So identification of location for a driver is not an issue, but how do he reach us there is, is something which he has to figure out and uh, data is required to support that navigation. Same is for the consumers. Uh, I mean, uh, consumers would not be in a position to track the cab but they will they'll be in a position they, they can book a cab and they can ask for a cab from where they are without using data so uh, i mean broadly if i speak uh, we've started or we have figured out ways to live with it rather than understanding as to what can be done and minimize the potential of or, or the potential losses that you might incur in terms of data disruptions for our business Maybe not, since he's already said that uh, he most of the time, they have an alternate solution where they can work on offlines. But business, so I represent, uh, my name is Tanmay and I represent Jagran. So when I, when I represent the uh, digital part. So it is a loss for uh, companies like us because we totally depend upon the, the websites. So and uh, so today's, uh, today's world, uh, so they are apart from social media channels, so the, inter, the websites, the news websites are the, one of the biggest communication to give the fast and instant news to the audience. So when you say internet is shut down, so it's a two, uh, it's a two way uh, you know, uh, uh, problem for both of, for the audience, for the users and, and the business. So for the audience, they are not able to get the live news and for as uh, businesses, yes, our entire uh, uh, monetary part is, is totally work on ads and a lot of, you know, uh, digital uh, campaigns, so which again gets shut down. So, we are, so when you say we, we are not able to, uh, so we get some lot of campaigns and we didn't able to deliver the impressions and whatever the, the metrics are. So that's a big loss for the company, especially 
uh, we who totally depend on internet domains. Let's look at what's been happening in Kashmir. And for months, they shut off internet communications, they shut off the internet, and suddenly people are left without any means of communication which they had got accustomed to. But that has not prevented people from still congregating and taking out processions and protest marches and stuff like that. So, you know, one point that I remember is that in the umbrella protests in Hong Kong, they used fire chat when the internet was shut down. Correct. So, there are other means and the other thing I think uh, what Shubo was mentioning was that SMS still functions. So, why is it that you're shutting down the internet but not but uh, other means and… But the I actually, yes, I remember when the, uh, when the Allahabad High Court ruling for uh, Babri Masjid was coming out, three days, I think, uh, at least SMS. The point that I was trying to make is, look at the security forces who have also become dependent on the same channels for communicating. Like, I'll give you an example, and this is a very stunning example. When the Pampur terrorist attack took place, the special forces who were put into the hostage rescue operation, they were actually chatting with each other on WhatsApp because that was the only secure communication tool they had to talk to each other and plan out the rest of the operation. And this is increasingly happening within the security architecture. Like another example I'll give you is the, even though India does not have a security operation center for cyber incidents, many uh, groups of people, whether the corporate sector or other critical sectors, they're all congregating with each other on WhatsApp today for the absence of any other secure channel, etc where information is flowing through very rapidly, especially when a major malicious IP is discovered or a major attack is discovered or a compromise is discovered. The, the benefits of keeping the internet on in these kind of situations increasingly far, far outweigh any gains that you might get by actually shutting it down. And it's actually impacting security operations in a big way.